this lecture we're going to move ahead in our analysis of audio so in the previous lecture we had looked at the following work workflow so what we had was okay let me just So let me open up the program. All right, so what we did was analyze the signal we obtained from a motor or whatever. So we took an MP3 recording. converted into wave so this was using ffmpeg once we had the wave file we did a sw.wave read uh, rather sw.read and that gave us the sampling rate and that gave us the entire data and with the help of that we could plot the time series whatever waveform it is so we had something like this now once we had that we took a Fourier transform of this time series to convert it into frequency domain or omega domain and we plotted the amplitude so certain peaks were found and these were the dominant frequencies at which the energy sort of contained so for example in this it was at these frequencies for the case of a bench grinder it was at these frequencies now remember this was a complete um, single recording meaning we were working under the assumption that whatever signal we were getting that is periodic and so we we took a Fourier, discrete Fourier transform of the entire domain However, what will happen if instead of this you have you want to do a, um, a sort of you want to analyze a speech for example so surely you can't wait for the entire speech to finish you want to obviously start figuring out which are the dominant frequencies in the audio so suppose this is the entire audio so you know that you have 16,000 samples per second. Of course, you can change the bit rate. You can change the number of samples per second to whatever you want. But essentially, you're gonna break down. Okay. So the smallest delta t is one over 16,000, and that corresponds to the largest frequency. If you don't have to capture any higher frequency, so human audible range is 20 kilohertz beyond that there's no point so you take a window like this find out the discrete Fourier transform and you assign it to this time so on this axis I have time and on this axis I'm gonna plot the frequency so at a certain time so if you can imagine you have plot like this right so this is time this frequency so at a given time right you have all these plots at the next time you have all these plots so these are in the orthogonal plane to ft curve so in each plane you get that particular Fourier spectrum no, because you don't want to make a 2d plot a 3d plot you take the amplitude at each frequency and you give it a color so essentially you are still plotting in f and t but now you make a color of this entire thing so wherever the frequency has the max amplitude you give it a red wherever it's medium you give it orange then yellow and so on meaning at a given time for all the frequencies you have a different color and the colors they correspond to different amplitudes 
okay so this is how you create what is called as a spectrogram and a spectrogram is a very useful tool to have because it allows you to directly get a good visual feel of which frequencies at a certain time are dominating over the others so at the next time if you have the red appearing over here well and the next time is stand over here you know that as time increases the dominant frequency is reducing so it will give a tone which is going down like ooh like it's going down if instead it goes up then you know that the frequency is going up like ooh something like that well pardon my sound effects so spectrogram gives you that information in fact on a spectrogram you will also sort of get an estimate of how the different harmonics are so let me do one thing let me open a very popular tool it's called as audacity let me try to show you the spectrogram so audacity is once again a very uh, it's an open source tool it's very robust it can do a lot of things so let me go to our previous folder let me open up the bench grinder video uh, the bench grinder audio okay so this was the bench grinder audio and So I have turned on the volume in my quarter. I don't want to wake up everyone. But see, the beauty is we don't need to wake up everyone. We can simply visualize the waveform. So let me go over here. Let me switch on spectrogram. Okay. So this is how the spectrogram looks like. Okay. So. The spectrogram is peaking over here, so let me see if I can. Okay, good. So I've taken a log of the y axis and look at where the peaks are formed. So it's 50 hertz, then at 100 hertz, 150 hertz, 200 hertz, 250 hertz, and so on. So this spectrogram tells you that over the entire time of recording, these are the dominant frequencies. Okay, the most dominant is the 50 hertz frequency because we know that the bench grinder was running at 3000 rpm and 3000 rpm corresponds to 50 hertz now in this particular lecture we are more interested in the doppler shift so if you recall from elementary physics the doppler shift corresponds to the apparent change of frequency so suppose this is an observer and this is a vehicle uh, of a moving source and the source has a horn and the horn is blaring so if the horn is if the source is steady you will perceive the horn to have a certain frequency say f naught but once the horn or the source starts moving with a velocity v the apparent frequency will be c upon c plus v times f naught where 
if the source is approaching the observer the velocity will be negative meaning the observed frequency will be higher than the base frequency but if the source is going away from the observer then you will perceive uh, this as positive and so the apparent frequency will reduce so what do you expect in a spectrogram so if this is time the peak that is this kind of a white color should sort of increase slightly and then fall off so at this point you know that the source has passed you once you are standing over here so it is going like this so once it passes this point it is no longer moving towards you but it is going away from you okay so then you know that you have passed well what i did was i went out to the street had a person do the recording and the recording is saved in the wave file oops yeah this let me just take it to right so the recording is called as horn dot wave let me load it let me get rid of this bench grinder so this is the time series for the horn not the horn but so let me get rid of this okay so let me get rid of this as well okay so this is the recording i have okay so i am interested in now ascertaining what is the shift in the frequency well in this particular demonstration I, there was no control on what speed the observer was, was was moving at we can sort of estimate maybe the observer was moving at 50 km per hour and i leave it as a small task for you to figure it out so this was the observer i'm showing the top view that observer was holding the sound recording was it's a mobile phone the distance between the moving vehicle or the street was 2 meter the vehicle was moving at a speed of 50 km per hour i don't know what the frequency of the horn is but you can sort of assume it to be whatever it is at, at far distances and once it starts moving you hear a high pitch sound and once the vehicle moves moves by the frequency starts to reduce and actually when the vehicle is moving by the amplitude of the sound also appears to increase and then decrease so around mm, this point you think that the vehicle has moved by because the amplitude also starts decreasing but we don't want to bother so much with the amplitude all right so now let us look at the spectrogram this gives us that information at at this point look this is increasing and then it decreases in fact let me make a logarithm of it actually the logarithm does not make things easy let me zoom in all right so this is a slight increase in the frequency and then suddenly there is a fall over here there is a fall in frequency and this is like a transition point where the vehicle has moved past us so now the question is all this is quite fine why are there multiple lines okay this is a very, very valid question why are there multiple lines i mean there appear to be a bunch of lines so this line over here 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 it's like octaves all over the place and the reason is quite simple the reason is the horn is not emitting a single frequency sound it's emitting a bunch of overtones and that's the reason why you have such such a variety of peaks and apparently the horn on my vehicle peaks between these two frequencies 
be something like 3.2k and this 3.6k nice shrill sound so the horn is expected to have a nice shrill sound the shriller the sound <laughs> the faster people will move away from it that's why you get these multiple like peaks in between okay let me see if i can change the color map uh, yeah, the gray scale makes it look better but anyway you get the point uh so let us see whether we can do all this in python right so let me go to python let me go to the folder which contains horn.wave so let me copy this because we're gonna need it anyway so let me create a new file python3 so let us declare it as doppler effect so let me execute this part of code because we're gonna need it anyway so then we will have sample comma t equal to sw dot read horn dot wave all right so let me let me plot the first 13 seconds of it so let me go back to audacity let me go back to the waveform oops So the waveform says that we are done with the entire process at around what's the time around nine seconds so t final will be nine but if t final is nine how many points should we have look per second there's gonna be sixteen thousand samples how do i know that let me print sam because sam is the number of samples per second so it's 16000 meaning in the data i need to take only data starting from 0 to 16000 if i want to represent only one second meaning if i say d1 is equal to d all till sam now let me print a lot let me plot T comma D1 where T is NP dot A range NP dot size of D1 times 1 by sample. So this means whatever D1 is that particular length I'm creating an array of 0, 1, 2, 3, whatever and multiplying it by 1 by sample because in one second I have 16,000 samples. So the delta T is going to be 1 over 16,000. Right. So let me plot this. So this is going to be a plot of one second. So this is the plot of one second. Great. What I want to do is plot the first nine seconds, meaning I'm going to do nine times or TF times sample. And when I run this, I should have the first nine seconds of the video uh, of the audio so let me just give a title plt dot title audio of a moving sound source all right plt dot x label time plt dot y label is the waveform right so what i would like to do now is to make a spectrogram out of it right so ideally i could have done this entire task 
of finding this out so how would you do it if you were to do it by hand so you know that you have a bunch of arrow points which represent your data and you take this point to this point say so this is maybe over one second of sampling meaning you are sampling 16,000 points and then you take the Fourier transform it assign it to this time then you take this to this then you assign it to this point then this to this and assign it to this point then this to this assign it to this point so you're keeping the number of discrete points in the discrete Fourier transform fixed at 16,000 or whatever it is yeah, you can change and then with the help of that you're finding out the discrete Fourier transform and assigning it to that time you could do that and then you have that entire map based on the amplitude you assign that pixel a color and you can do it but um, Python thankfully allows you to avoid doing all that and there's an inbuilt function called as spec specgram so the name of the function is specgram so let me show you the contextual yeah. help so it's you're given x that is the signal the nfft you don't need to bother with that number of line segments then you have the fs which stands for a sampling frequency in our case it is samples per time unit which is going to be simply sam all right and there's a whole lot of options but you don't need to bother about all those for the simple case once you start doing complicated problems you can sort of determine what these values are going to be for this particular case we will simply call it with x and fs so spectrum the data is going to be d fs equal to sam and uh, yeah let's see okay there's a bunch of return values there you go this is the plot that we were looking for this is the exact plot we were able to make using audacity so let me just increase the size of the figure maybe oh this is good sorry so this is just adjusting the image size and let me make the color map as gray Alright, so this is where that transition as well. Maybe gray is not the best. Let me make it jet. Alright, so this is where that transition occurs, and it occurs at this particular frequency. It also shows the presence of multiple frequencies because the horn is not just a single function, uh, not, rather, not a single tone, it's a mixture of multiple tones. In fact, let me drop the audio files that i had in the previous video the bench grinder and the table fan as well just to show how their spectrogram also look like so let me change the okay so this is how the entire plot looks like and well i've i'm hoping you've learn something new and this kind of things are incredibly useful and this is not just useful for analyzing audio files but this is useful for analyzing any kind of signal that you may get maybe from hot wire anemometry in case you are studying turbulence you put a probe somewhere and you measure the signal you can find out all sorts of information using the spectrogram at which at dominant frequencies you are achieving a signal that can give you a lot of idea and find out the spectrum 
uh, you can find a lot of things okay so this is very useful a very useful tool to know so with this i conclude this particular lecture and i'll see you next time with a new topic on image processing until then have a nice day bye